five words. I, I think I have two answers to this uh, question. Honestly, this question like gave me many heart palpitations when I saw it. The first word is definitely generous. He's a generous soul, always giving in every which way. He's somebody I consider a gardener. He plants seeds and he watches his garden grow and it grows and there's always greenery and life around him. Hashim is a very colorful human being and, uh, and his colors radiate and, and it just rubs off on you. You, you cannot deny it. And those are, those are my five. <laughs> she is the ocean, she is the vessel, and she's the prophet. We're getting phone calls like, you need to come to this place, and there is a Google pin, and we just like drove and got there, and it was like another surprise. We arrived, we had no idea where we were going, and we arrived to, uh, to this warehouse in Ben Jisrein. It was um, really unexpected in the sense of like the way it all came together. You know, you know, everyone was there, mm. uh, like Aisha, Sheikha, and Rola, and everyone, everyone. You know, they, they reproduce uh, one of the sculptures as a cake. There was like the social media influencer reciting poetry. It was just a whole thing, like. It was, uh, it was like, it, it felt like magic. I think we felt like that's a beginning of community. Like we need to support each other. We need the role in order to make this community. It's no longer about, you know, the system providing infrastructure. Also that, you know, space, Farasha Gallery, it's, it's, a, it's another collective, you know, that's so inspiring to have I think in Abu Dhabi. And we realized that this this entire community came around the cup and the saucer. Cup and saucer. I don't like to use the word success, but if we were to use that word, that is the definition of a successful community. One that collaborates and comes together, congregates and responds to one another to create what I believe is actually a movement that is starting here. It needs to come from a very honest and intuitive space and not being yani, obsessed with the idea of creating an object to be displayed. It's about being really committed. I think ownership also to your practice is very important. My creative utopia is, uh, starts when I realized my voice. The moment that you realize what your voice is and where it exists um, and then drawing up your creative utopia around that hypothetical space. We have a body uh, of work that looks at this surrealist notion of existing between land and sea. And so you have the um, polar bear and other examples that maybe can't be tied down to the landscape of the UAE. And as I was talking to Hashil, I was telling him about uh, Lulu Island and that it was actually a man-made island and it was built early in the days of the start of the UAE. Um, and it's actually the exact same size uh, and shape of the island of Abu Dhabi. So it's, a, it's another Abu Dhabi that protects Abu Dhabi from the sea and from the, the, the aggression of the sea coming in. And at the time, all of the homes were right at the sea. This buffer then uh, um, began to influence his thinking about this, uh, this notion of living 50% in sea and 50% on land. And what does it mean when you reclaim land? Uh, uh, what does it mean when you protect yourself from water? From there, like the show Almost Home that I curated in the, in the show that Munira curated, <laughs> uh, I started like addressing this notion of, you know, what is home? like the differences between Arabic and English, where in Arabic, Watan is like a geographical territory. You need to find home within yourself. It's, it's a feeling. And the paper plane is, it's a work that, uh, it's a metaphor, you know, uh, you know for these like uh, lingering souls. A flow of 
you know, like this harnessed uh, energy, it's, it's releasing itself. I felt like, okay, this is the time where I need to actually utilize it to grow as an artist, as a painter as well. This new body of work is mainly American landscapes and especially upstate New York because I spent seven years in New York. Why not? Because this is where we are, you know, we need to escape, you know, we, we all need to find a space where we feel safe and what is better than nature. And you have all these like different moments, you know, you have the Roosevelt cable car MTA. It's, it's the only subway cable car in New York. We would go as, you know, searching souls. Uh, you have Amazon deliveries, which is a reality that we're facing today. Like everything is like on the door, do not touch. And this body of work, I'm actually like addressing two things, mainly emotions and landscapes. And also in emotions, there's like love, pain and fear. And then landscapes, you know, you have man-made and natural. And looking at iconographies also. And then you have a uh, Walmart inside, the people are not real people, they're cut out. The football uh, ad, buy two, two Fanta boxes and you get a football ticket or something. So I felt like a little bit humorous. And then the last, last painting that I started working on is actually the U-Haul. <laughs> and it's a truck and you know, it's a metaphor, just like the paper plane, <laughs> we're ready to move. <laughs>